Hello and welcome. This is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and a brand new video training for you. Social Media Manager we're going to create today in which we can send our posts, videos, pictures up to four different uh, social medias including Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So stay tuned. It's going to be a fantastic training. Alrighty, thank you so much for joining me today. And in this week's training video, we're going to be uh, taking off from last week's in which we uh, had sent information anywhere in where we use Zapier, the power of Zapier, to uh, automatically email. Uh, we used to send to Google Calendar, Google Sheets, and we did a bug reporting that would email back to us. So continuing with our Zapier automation, we are going to create a social media manager in which we can automate posts posts, pictures, and videos to send to Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Twitter today, and all with just a very little bit of coding. So I'm really excited to show this one to you. And basically, the idea is for a user to create a post title, a post description, put in a, a link, a picture link, or a video link, and then have a specific time that they want to schedule that to go out for, and then have that automatically sent out. Okay, and we can do this pretty much uh, relatively easy with just a few little macros as well as Zapier integration. And if you have not seen uh, the video uh, for send information anywhere, we're going to be moving from that. So it's a good idea if you if you didn't see that training and didn't download the work, but it's a good idea to do that now because there's a lot of information there that was covered in that particular video that is uh, helpful for, for this video. And we're going to briefly go over it, but not in detail. And uh, so what we did in that particular video was that we created, uh, used a, a, a software called Zapier website there where we created different zaps. And those zaps uh, combined what we used is called a web hook. A web hook and we created uh, the web hook from Excel to send to various uh, integrations. And uh, we went over how to use Zapier to connect to uh, Google Sheets, if you remember, and we used it to do Google Calendar and a few others. So we're going to be doing something different today, and that is going to be sending it to uh, YouTube for a post, sending it to LinkedIn uh, for a post, as well as sending it to Facebook and to um, Twitter. So we're going to cover those four today and how to do that. All right, back to the sheet we go, and uh, let's go ahead and close this one out. And uh, basically what we do is we give the user the ability to select which one they want to post to with simply a selection change. Okay, so we covered how to do this uh, this feature in Excel, but briefly in the developers, I'll go over just some brief, as well as we have other features that we've gone over before, like selecting the highlighted row. So we can go over that as well. All right, let's climb under the hood into the developers and uh, into the visual basic module here if you don't have the developers tab once again you can access this simply by going to the options and then going to the customize ribbon and selecting this developers tab right here okay also alt f11 will get you there as well so we can use that into the visual basic we go and we have some macros all right let me go ahead and shrink this up for you so you can see close this out and uh, we have some on sheet macros okay posts is our main sheet that's our only sheet we're going to run. so let's double click that and we'll go over the macros on that particular sheet okay we have macros that that happen when we make a change to a sheet okay and we have macros that happen when we make a selection okay a selection is just simply selecting a cell when we select cell even without a change we want things to happen okay and what are the there's been pretty much two things on selection change that are happening and this one basically says if we select any row in the table from e13 to j27 and okay so there's going to be two conditions one is we select row and e and the target row is not equal empty and let me let me explain that to you so this is e this is our column e right so that means two conditions one if we select any cell in this range 
E13 through N27, that's one condition. The other condition is if this, the value in this column is not blank. So watch what happens. When we select here, nothing happens. When we select here, the row is highlighted. Now why does it happen here and not here? Because there's no value in E. Remember, that's our second condition, okay? So we've got two conditions. Both of those conditions have to be met for us to highlight this row. Okay. And when we do highlight that row, how do we get that uh, to happen? Well, we do that, we basically, in B1, we land the target row, we send our row to B1, okay? And then we're going to load the post, okay? That's, uh, that's basically how we load the information. When we select here, all the information from this row heads up to here. And we covered that a lot uh, in other videos, but basically if, you, if we unhide, uh, columns A and B, we'll see that uh, the selected row is here, and we use conditional formatting to do that, okay? So when we go into conditional formatting, we will see that when we have one conditional format, when B1, B1 is the row, we want to apply this format, okay? We do have a video covering that called Selected Highlight Row. If you want to go into detail, you'll see about how that is done, okay? And the same thing as saving. When we make a change here, um, when we make a change, let's go ahead and cover that. Uh, one more. Let's just cover this one here real quick, although we did cover that. The other selection change happens when we select two, again, two conditions. When we select K13 to N27 and E, there is a value in target E, then what do we want to happen? Well, what to happen is we want to put this little character, and that's basically the checkbox in Wingdings. You see that? See, this is the character here, right? But why does it appear as a checkbox? Because we've selected the font as Wingding. If you go ahead and look at the font here, it's Wingdings, okay? So that's how we do that. That may have give you issues in a Mac, okay? Uh, keep that in mind. There are other ways to work around in Macs, all right? These, uh, these help us determine whether it's a new or false post a new post or not and you can that's covered in new records in a, a different video so basically that tells us if this is a new record or not but what I really want to get to is how to we post to social media using Zapier that is the brunt of this video so we're gonna go over that we have four different possible choices we have Facebook we have YouTube we have LinkedIn and we have Twitter now how do we get this information how do we get a post title how do we get a post description? How do we get a picture link and a video link all up into those social media sites at a specific time? And that's what we're going to cover today. Okay. Now, if we'll remember back in uh, Zapier, we had uh, a lot of integrations that we have the ability to do that, right? And let's go over one here for you. Um, let's go over. Um, Facebook post, okay? And this Zapier, basically what it's doing, it's catching a hook, and we went over that before, okay? Catching a hook, went over the last video. And in this particular case, let's take a look at this hook. This hook, we're gonna view the web hook. And remember, in, let's go back into the VBA module here, okay? And we're gonna go to um, post to social media, okay? And basically, all we're doing in this module is we've defined all of the parameters, right? We've defined um, the selected row as whatever row we selected, the title, E in the selected row, uh, the description, the picture link of the video. So we've defined all of those, okay? Regardless of where it's going, we need to know all those variables. And then we want to know if K and the selected value equal a check. Now, what is K? Let's go ahead and go through that. I'll pull that up. K is Facebook. So that means if K and the selected row equals U, that means it's been checked, right? Right? So if it's good, then that means please send to Facebook, right? We want to send to Facebook. So if K and the selected row equal U, then run on Facebook selected. And how do we do that? Each individual one has a specific hook in which you in our last video. And this part of the hook is always the same, regardless of where we're sending it to, right? Regardless of where we're going to send it, that part is always the same. 
okay this is the basic this is your account number and these are this is the specific so this part is the part that changes for every hook now how do we get that now whether we create a new hook a web hook or a old one it's always going to stay the same and here under this hook that I've previously created and I called it Facebook post right here is it is this is this eight one Z A L five okay so we need to make sure that part of matches right here okay we need to make sure that matches and it does okay and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be posting the same information even though it's just easier you can change this up you can post different information um, but just for ease because you may want to use it I've every every hook includes a title a description a picture link and a video link okay although we may not use each one we don't necessarily need to use each one and I'll show you why but you can okay so let's let's explore that hook now once we run it okay let's go ahead and continue and now it's gonna look for this hook right and we don't need to pick up a child key so we'll skip that step and now it says test successful but let's uh, retest let's retest um, but what I want to do is I just want to comment let me just uh, unselect I only, well, I only want to do Facebook right now, so I'm going to click here. I don't want to worry about those others, and I'm going to select this row, okay? That means, in this case, it's only going to send to Facebook, okay? So, right now, let's go ahead and um, run that macro. We can run that macro. I've already assigned that macro to this, so just click that, and it's going to send it, okay? Back into, back into this one, actually. Uh, and then we're going to continue, okay? And we can turn on our zap, okay? And let's go ahead and look at that. Let's go back into the catch a hook just so we can see it again. Continue it, continue. And uh, okay, the test was successful. We can view it, okay? The post description, the post title came in, the link for YouTube, okay? and the page link okay so the, the picture link excuse me so that's a picture link now how did we get a picture link well let's take a look okay into our folders I'm using Dropbox but you can use any link any link that links to a picture is just fine okay anyone would work uh, I've used Dropbox so let's go ahead and show you that because I have everything in stored in so this particular folders in Dropbox right so if I want to send this picture let me go ahead and uh, so you can view that in a thumbnail um, Okay, so I'm using this picture right here. Okay, so right click. Okay, and then we're going to copy the Dropbox link, Dropbox link. And then we can paste that right in our code right here. So we can post that right here. And you'll notice one thing, okay? You see how it ends in a zero here? Um, what this does is it sends a user directly to the Dropbox website. If you change it to a one, it'll it will let them view it automatically so and that's with videos or pictures so I always recommend or downloads change that last character of one it won't send them to the Dropbox website which is kinda nice that's one extra step and I think Zapier might not be able to read it well if it is ending with a zero if you're gonna use Dropbox any other link would be fine though so download means write it download straight away it may not be affected however in this case since it's just a picture alright so we've done that and uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at how we got this into Facebook. So uh, we, we see it all, it's all correct now, and we'll go ahead and continue it, our zap is on. And now let's go into the Facebook portion of this. So this is where we're gonna get the information, and this is where we're gonna put the information, okay? I've already connected my Facebook account, but you'll wanna connect yours as well. I have several pages right and what we're going to be doing is we're creating a page post okay I want to post to this you can create a page video or photo okay so this is nice if you decide you want to uh, but if you're gonna do all these like let's say sometimes you want to do a photo sometimes you want to do a video and sometimes you want to do a page post you want three different hooks okay so that means so that means that you'll have to build on this, right? You'll want to build on this because if you do different ones, that means you'll need one column for Facebook video, one column for Facebook picture, one for, you know, for ease, I've just created one column. We're going to select just a post. But remember, you can do all three, but you'll need three different hooks, okay? So you have to create three different, one going to a page photo, a video, or a page post. We'll just do a page post for now. 
okay and we'll continue on that and then we'll take a look at how and this is my Facebook pages so that's already connected and um, now it says I have multiple pages, right? And this Excel for Business, I don't use too much, so we'll use that one. I have other ones, Excel for Freelancer, you're familiar with, but we'll just go ahead and go Excel for Business now. And here is this page right here, okay? Here is here is the here's my Excel for Business page. Let me go ahead and refresh that to see if we sent any any links there uh, recently, just so I can check. Okay. So, so here's the Excel for Business page, and there's no January 2nd. So there's been no post in a week or so on this particular page, which is good. And so um, let's go ahead and continue with that. Back into Zapier we go, uh, which is here. And uh, so we've got the right page. Now what do we want the message to do? Now we can put, um, I've put the title right you can select here and you can select whatever you want remember we have four values we have title we have description we have picture link and we have video link okay and so um, you can um, you can put whatever you want you can put all in it so I decided I'm gonna put the post title and I'm gonna put the post description here and then I'm gonna put a link in here uh, I can put a video link or uh, a picture link let me go ahead and Maybe I can put a picture link here, picture link, and then we'll get rid of the video link. And click delete. Let's see how we do that. Let's do backspace, backspace, and then go ahead and add that picture link. Okay. Okay. And then continue. Okay. So a test page was sent to Facebook about 15 hours ago. Okay, that was yesterday, so that means I'll wanna I'll wanna do another one. Okay, and turn that on. Okay, we'll activate that. All right, and now let's go ahead and go to our dashboard and let's go ahead and look at all of our, here it is, webhook to Zapier. Okay, let's turn this one off. I'm not gonna use that one today. That's a uh, Google Sheets. Uh, turn that off, okay, and go back to dashboard. And so let's turn this one off and let's turn, keep that one on. Okay, so it's on, it's working. And now all we need to do is select here. I only want Facebook sent. And then we'll go ahead and send the selected post. Okay, and now it's sent. We'll go back into uh, Zapier and we can go into the history just to check our history. Okay, 1150, that was sent now. Good, that looks good. And now we'll go ahead and uh, refresh this page here. This is the Excel for Business page, and we'll have a look. All righty, and here we go. Here's the post here, and here's the picture okay via Dropbox that's where it came from and perfect so it looks great it's here's here's the title right here's the title okay here's the description and here's the picture okay let's go back into there here's the title here's the description and here's the picture all right so that got sent out great perfect that works really well let's go ahead and take a look at um, YouTube um, hmm these are all YouTube video links. We don't want that. I want to send a new video to YouTube, right? This is like if you have a video already, right? But I want to send a new video. I'm going to use my channel. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and uh, send only to YouTube. Okay. And um, you can send all. And I want to change this link. I want to change this link, this video link. Obviously, if it's already in YouTube, I don't want to upload it. This is about uploading to YouTube. So let's go ahead and get a new link for that. And we can go into our Dropbox folder, and this little Christmas video looks nice, okay? So I'm going to right-click that. I'm going to copy the Dropbox link. And I'm going to replace this link right here, okay? Control-Paste. Okay, and I'm going to actually change that 0 to a 1 also so that there's no issue with that. Okay, so we see it's here. It's changed here. If you were, if you were to expand this, you can see it there, okay? And um, now we're ready to go. We only have YouTube selected, so good. And the same idea in YouTube, right? It's the same. Let's go ahead and look at Zapier so we can just double check that uh, here, okay? And um, let's go ahead and these are my zaps, okay? Because I previously created these. So let's go ahead and this webhook to YouTube has already been created. Let's go ahead and look at that. And we can just view it. We can view the webhook. We know how it. 81x so here's the the key we want to make sure that that is the same 
and that's this one run on YouTube selected okay and here's that little code all the information is the same in the link everything else is the same so this is the only part that changed this is the YouTube by book okay so we're good to go on that let's go ahead and and we know it's on we want to make sure it's on we want to make sure this is on okay and uh, just so you know it's all the same let me go ahead and show you how I set this one up um, we can edit the template okay so basically in this the title right we have a description I put the description we have a video link and in YouTube uh, I'm gonna set it as private you know you can set it as public right which is nice publish that we can put our specific time uh, all available partner oh this is par for partner account so we don't need that you can set up tags now I don't have any tags but let's say let's say you were gonna do a lot of YouTube videos you should have a column here for tags you know add more fields add one for tags add one for anything so you you have the ability to customize this which could be really nice so we're just doing the basics today but I want to give you the ability to show it and then you have the ability to notify subscribers so for me I'm gonna say no but if I was doing a normal post I would want to notify all my subscribers okay so that's it this is on and I know it's working so let's just go back to Efren let's go to my YouTube uh, this is the channel I don't use this channel too much it's a just an Excel for business channel so I only have one video on this particular channel which is perfect for for our testing purposes and I'll refresh it and you can see it's just this one video here okay so back into Excel let's select make sure we've selected the the proper um, which is here okay make sure we've selected the one Dropbox and then we're gonna send the selected post it's only gonna send to YouTube we don't have LinkedIn or Twitter selected yet so all right let's go ahead and uh, go back into our YouTube channel all right and uh, we'll go ahead and refresh that and let's see if it's coming up all right and there it is 17 percent process so it'll take a few seconds it's not a long video but uh, and there you go they sell for freelance creator social media manager so the titles working uh, the videos here it's being processed so automatically it gets sent to YouTube which was really a nice feature and uh, when you use these multiply uh, it's really great in multiples because you can send them all out to different social medias at the same time which is quite helpful all right so you can see that that that's been done and uh, let's go ahead and take a, let's go ahead and click on that it's ready to watch now and uh, here's a little video so we're good to go so so here's the description here's the title all right and uh, it's nice it's a little bit late for Christmas but you get the point uh, so posting to YouTube is very very easy as well and now we have both LinkedIn and Twitter left let's go ahead and go over those things um, all right let's go ahead and uh, go back into our our Excel here and let's say we have another one and let's go ahead and unclick Facebook and unclick YouTube and let's go ahead and post to LinkedIn and Twitter both at the same time on this particular sample here and uh, we have a, a picture same and we have in this case I have a YouTube video a link let's just check the link make sure it's an actual video all right um, and uh, we'll go ahead and click here just want to make sure I don't remember what I set this at okay good that's uh, that, that's our that's the last video the one that you hopefully have seen for this so that that uh, video is good so uh, the link is is good so we can uh, rest assured on that back into the Excel now um, what we want to do in this case is send to both um, LinkedIn and Twitter on this particular account and let's go ahead and see how those activate those in, in Zapier I don't believe they're activated yet so let's go ahead and open up the right browser and go back into Zapier and uh, I believe I've created these before let's just see there it is right down here okay we'll turn this one on and we'll take a look at it and then we've got one to LinkedIn and here's that one we'll turn that one on and we'll go over those details there so now we've got all four Facebook LinkedIn Twitter and YouTube and we'll take a quick look at, at, at LinkedIn and we went over how to set these up in detail okay LinkedIn if we go ahead and view that webhook uh, we'll see that it ends in uh, its A1Q so we want to make sure that that is accurate LinkedIn run on LinkedIn this is our code here and here is the the digits so that matches that's good we're sending the same information as always 
And so that's set up. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the we're going to go ahead and take a look at the template here. And basically, we have the ability to put in a comment, um, which is required. And I just put the post title there. Visible to we have options to anyone. You know, you could make it just my connections, or but I'll put it to anyone. And then we have the content title and the content description. And we have a content URL and we have an image URL. So perhaps we can use both in this case. We'll take a look and see how that works. Okay, so that's set up. Back into the dashboard we go. Let's go ahead and look at the Twitter one here. And uh, same thing here. We'll look at the view of the webhook. This one ends in P67. Make sure that in our code also ends in P67. And that is for the Twitter. So we have just four little um, sends. Facebook, YouTube. LinkedIn and Twitter okay and so we're going to that looks good and on Twitter let's see what kind of options we have we're going to edit that template we have the ability to add a title and um, because Twitter only allows us 140 characters I just I'm not going to put the description in here and we'll go ahead and put a picture link in here we can uh, do an image we could do a shortener US URL if we want that, so we'll put that as yes. So that's set up. It's just really, Twitter doesn't have too many options, just three different options. So it's, it's kind of a nice, easy one. And so we're good to go, and these are both on, okay? And let's go ahead and look at my Twitter account. Not a lot of action going on here, but uh, fair enough. And here is my, the last one was January 2nd on the last uh, video that I sent out. You feel free to uh, join me on Twitter. Uh, at Excel for Freelancers. I do post videos and updates there, so we'll plug it, why not, while we're at it. As well as LinkedIn, um, let's go ahead and uh, view my profile. And there's my profile on LinkedIn. And um, let's take a look at the post. I don't do a whole lot of action on, on LinkedIn, but uh, you can see here's some, some information in my, my thread here. And uh, profile as well as, uh, let's go ahead and look at the posts. Uh, post view is here okay so my posts are here the last one um, was two weeks ago and so you can see those are my posts and this is where we're going to be adding to that so we'll keep this open for now now all we have to do is run the code with those two selected we have LinkedIn and Twitter selected so let's just go ahead and send selected all right and now they both got sent it's very quick so we can go back into our browser and take a look and see how that that looked out all right, and into Twitter, we'll go ahead and refresh that screen. And here is the picture. Here is the title that we just added. And here is the picture that we sent. So that worked out well. Let's go ahead and go into LinkedIn and we'll refresh that screen. And uh, okay, here we go. Now we have this post in Twitter also, the picture in the middle. And uh, so that's pretty good. Oh, this was a video. Okay, so this one we actually put the video, uh, the YouTube video in here, which was nice. And uh, so that was good. So that worked out really great. All right. There's a few other components of this. Let's go ahead and through them. The idea is that we want to schedule these, right, at a specific scheduled time. Not necessarily, now while we can click and send it, we want it to schedule automatically. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to send anything that's been posted already. And you'll see, I just posted this, right? So the last line of code, the last line of code right here, what it does is it says J in the selected row equals now. And all that does is put that time, date and time right here, J, right? Plus the selected row puts now. And now means the time in VBA. So so that prevents, um, prevents uh, posts from getting sent out, multiple posts from getting sent out. So now all we have to do is run some code that says, hey, I'm going to look through this list, okay? If there's any that are scheduled now or in the past that hasn't, but that have not been posted, please send it, okay? So let's see what that code might look like, okay? So we have something called start macro, which I created, okay? And the idea is, what I want to do is I want to, first I want to know what the last row is, okay? The last row, the last used row, in this case it's 18. I want to go from 13 to 18. I want the code to do that. I want to look for every row that has a scheduled time, either now or in the past, and, so two conditions, and that this is blank. Because it, if it has been posted, like for example in this one, right? 
let's just say this okay in this one right you see it's scheduled for one January 1st of 18 which is in the past right and it hasn't been posted yet so that's something we want to send right away okay so here's how we would look here's how that would look if J and post row value equals empty remember J is the posted on so if that is empty that's one condition and I, that is the posted time, is less than or equal to now. So if both of those conditions are met, then I need you to, one, select this row automatically. This will select, tell VBA to select that row. So basically the action is, that's the action. E and selected row. E and selected, so that's the action that it's performing. So now that it's selected, then what I want to do, I want to run this macro post to social media post to sm and that's the same action as clicking this button if we right click if you right click this button and we assign the macro which is actually already assigned right you're going to see that it's it would be this macro that it's assigned to actually because it's a group you can't really see you can't you can't see but if you click on the individual components of this group you click assign to macro you see post to sm right so because it's a group and it's a group because there's more than one shape in there it won't show but it's there okay it's actually assigned to the end the macros assigned to the individual shapes of the group okay so that's how that macro works basically and the idea is but I'm not gonna activate it on this workbook the idea is when you open a workbook I've clicked on this workbook here and on this sub that means when the workbook opens I want you to check now this is not this is just comment it out but because I don't when you get this workbook I don't want this running okay but if to make it active all you need to do is remove that first comment like that okay then it's gonna run this macro automatically when the workbook opens and check for any posts that are gonna go out okay and so that'll that'll run and you can you can set this up on a timer too so anytime this macro runs it'll check for um, scheduled posts okay if anything's before or after it'll send it so that's kind of a nice check um, you can also set up that uh, if it's after you can set up to run this at a specific time okay so so it's always a good idea you could just do something like application Um, on time on time and then what time you know you could set you could set set a specific time for this to run as well so it'll run at a specific time which is kind of a nice feature okay so that is you have that ability and there's also one other feature I like the ability to duplicate if we have a, a specific post and we only want to make a few changes maybe I just want to duplicate it and then make a change so I've added this button duplicate and it duplicates everything and uh, you'll see this is just because if we add a blank space uh, so if we duplicate it it duplicates everything except the scheduled four times and then you have the ability to add in a time you could just put in a date um, let's say 115 and then change the time to let's say 7 a.m. okay so that will that way this post will go out at 7 a.m. or whenever the macro runs it'll it will run okay if it's in the past it will send it automatically so that's how you do it and you just like so duplicate and let's go over how duplicate works it's a really simple macro and I'd like to show you how that works and I've put that in here save add new post now the save post and the new post macros those are very basic and we went over that idea in previous videos so we're not going to go over them now because there's not too much new information something that we haven't covered in past videos the duplicate post this is new so I do want to go over that with you and all we need to do is we need to get two variables I need to know what row has been selected and what is the first available row okay I need to know what is the selected row and what is the first available row in this case the first available is 20 basically what I want to do is I want to copy all this information and I want to put it right here that's all that macro does okay and I want to also copy this basically what I want to do is I want to copy the entire row I want to paste it down here but I also want to clear out any uh, scheduled for or posted on. I want to clear this out so that uh, you can put in your own time. So that's all that that macro does. Okay, we get the selected row, which is the active cell row, and then we get the first available row, which is the last row with text plus one in column E. In column E, okay, we use column E because that column always has data. Okay, 
So the last the last row with text is 19 plus 1 is 20. Okay, so that's how we determine those two. And now all we need to do is we need to say e and the first available through n, e through n equals e through n of the selected row. So basically I'm saying e through n of the new row equals e through n of the selected row. Okay, so that's how. So it, it's actually faster. You could do copy and paste, but I only want the values. I don't want to. I don't want to mess with the formats. All I want is the text. So I did a straight equals equals. And remember, you can only do that when exactly the same rows and columns, right? So we're we're basically pasting one value to the other. So it's like copy and paste, but it's much faster and much more direct. And we can do it in just one line of code. Okay, and then what I'm going to say is I and J clear those contests. Now I and J are the scheduled for and um, posted on, so I want to clear those out. Okay, so in that column I've just cleared those out because I don't want I don't want that, and that is it. Okay, so that's how we duplicate a post, and uh, the rest is pretty much uh, simple. Uh, we've covered most of the rest in the other videos so we don't need to worry about that and that this particular application can be built up a lot you can add a lot more columns you can add a lot more social media accounts adding your own uh, Zapier is fully capable of adding to to many others and uh, so that's just really a quick way to create your own social media manager with auto posting okay so it's a great way to do it create new post all that does is it clears out the existing data and allows you to put in a new post but when you select a new one it automatically fills in with the selected ones and we went over that also as well so i hope you really love this particular video i hope you get a lot out of it creating a social media manager to automate these things uh, it's going to save you tons of time and increase your accuracy as well i hope you liked it if you have any questions or comments let me know i would also love to hear your feedback and please do share this video with all of your friends and uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Have a great one.